What's up YouTube, this is Mathwiz97 and I know I've got a lot of explaining to do regarding this video because you're probably thinking two things right about now. One, why is the length of the video so short? And two, where's Multiverse been? Well, I'll let you know where Multiverse has been. The thing is, this pay-per-view, I don't know if it was Elgato or Sony Vegas, what it was, but I had like major issues with trying to edit this thing. I mean, it recorded just fine, so I don't know what went wrong, but like, when I went to put it into Sony Vegas, it had like this green screen at the end, so pretty much it would get this one image and then freeze. So initially, I tried to just cut it short and, well not, not like cut it completely short, because it was like right after the end of the main event. So I just stopped, like I made the, I like trimmed the recording so that the very end point would be at the, um, so that like it would just be before that uh, image where it froze. And when I did that, I rendered the whole thing out uh, so that I could, it would be like pre-rendered for the commentary. And what happened was I get this weird looking thing where it's like every frame faded into each other like it was fade 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 like just each frame faded it just looked it just looked like garbage so what i then had to end up doing was upload the original recording file to youtube download that and then put that into sony vegas to render again so it took that whole process there and then, plus with it being Thanksgiving break, I had a whole week off of school. Um, I'm actually doing this on Thanksgiving Day, so happy Turkey Day, everybody, even though this is going to be uploaded later than that. But um, So pretty much, I was watching my sister at home, and I live in an apartment, so I that means pretty much if I did anything, it would interfere with what other people were doing, and what they were doing would interfere with my commentary. So really... I didn't have any time to do a commentary, so that's why this pay-per-view is so late in production, and that's why it's so short, because I went through the whole process to get this thing, and then when I tried to render it again, the new file, the render time was over 25 hours and still counting. I mean, I, I, ain't nobody got time for that. I, I can't be rendering out over 25, it would have been over 26 hours of footage, that's... No, I mean, like, the pay-per-view was... I even had a SummerSlam pay-per-view that I had the same issue with. However, when I rendered that one, for whatever reason, I didn't get the same issue. And that only took a little more than 24 hours. It took a little over a day. And that pay-per-view was, like, 20 minutes longer. So, I don't... I don't understand what the issue was, but... In the end, I just decided to, like, majorly cut out footage, and I do apologize. Not only for this being so late, but because of the, uh, that I had to cut footage out, but, so, there's no entrances, um, I know the only time I showed the loading screen was that one match, because, you know, I just needed time to introduce this whole thing, but, we're kicking off the Extreme Rules pay-per-view here, Zack Ryder versus R-Truth, and this is pretty much a kickoff match, that's pretty much what it, what it's, what it is, that's pretty much what its purpose serves, and pretty much just to fire up the crowd, get things going here, and also that JBL Jinder Mahal match, that meant nothing, so I scrapped that as well. Um, so yeah, I, I do apologize for how late this, like, I, I am seriously sorry, but I don't want to upload something that I wouldn't watch, and I'm not going to take 26 hours to render a pay-per-view, that's not happening. I mean, especially if it was something, you know, bullshit, like, like in this circumstance it was, but... Hopefully this hasn't killed my credibility with the series, but I know I'm like way behind now, but I do have the next episode recorded. I just gotta, you know, go through the process again and hope, hope against hope that I don't get the same issue as I did with this episode, because if I, I, I don't know, I don't know if it's Elgato mess up the recordings, if it's, I, it, w it wouldn't be Sony Vegas, I guess, because I've never had issues with Sony Vegas, but I have had issues with Elgato in the past, so I don't know what the issue is, but... Hopefully things will turn out for the better. Um, so anyway, I promise. Well, I'm not gonna promise because I, you never know with uh, technological difficulties. I mean, can't really do anything to stop that. So I'll do my best to produce the content in the future. I mean, I know I've got the whole next episode already recorded, so that should be fun. I'm going to cross my fingers that Elgato didn't mess this one up and that it's gonna render out okay. So. 
Now that that's all out of the way, let's get into this matchup here. Zack Ryder versus R-Truth. We also know that our main event is a match between the WIZ champion Triple H and his opponent Brock Lesnar. That's our main event in an Extreme Rules match. And as we can see here, R-Truth has got Zack Ryder up. Oh, what a move there. Like a shoulder breaker? No, that's not even a shoulder breaker, but that just looked painful. Just getting dropped on your shoulders, onto your opponent's shoulders. That's bone against bone right there. But anyway, Zack Ryder countered here. And R-Truth, he's going to do it again. He's looking to break Zack Ryder's collarbone with that one. But anyway, R-Truth going to the court. No, he's going to the outside here. I don't know what R-Truth has planned. He's uncovering the announce table. And Zack Ryder just going to take a moment here to try and fire up the crowd as now R-Truth re-enters the ring. And here's Ryder and Irish Whip sending R-Truth to the outside. And there's a shoulder tackle sending R-Truth or to the outside here. And now Zack Ryder, big splash off the top rope to the outside. And Zack Ryder, well, not only Zack Ryder, but both of these superstars are winless in this series so far. As we see R-Truth just choking out Zack Ryder here. And now R-Truth, he's got Zack Ryder in a headlock. Irish Whip sends him over the top rope here. Now, what could our truth be possibly setting up here? Is truth here? Maybe possibly. Wait a minute. What is, what is our truth doing here? No, he's not gonna do this. Our truth. DDT onto the apron to Zack Ryder there. As you see the replay, boom, right onto the apron there. A DDT and Ryder might be unconscious here. As one more time, another look. Is that just vicious from our truth? And Arch Zack Ryder, he's unconscious. He's got to be out of it here. As referee Ryder's gonna get what? Uh, I can't. I can't believe this. Zack Ryder's back on his feet. I thought he would have been counted out, but Ryder's back in this one. Don't count out Ryder. No pun intended. As R Truth takes him off the top rope with a Frankenstein or one, two, and Zack Ryder kicks out of tremendous resolve being shown by Zack Ryder as he hits a rough Ryder out of nowhere. Hooks the leg. One, two, three, and Zack Ryder knocks off our truth here. And what a performance shown by Zack Ryder. I mean, that DDT onto the apron followed up by this Frankensteiner off the top rope. And you would have had to think, you would have thought that Ryder would be out there. I mean, tremendous resolve being shown here. Tremendous performance from Zack Ryder. And nobody would have thought these two would have gone to the limit like they did here but what a great match to kick off the show try to fire up these fans for what is sure to be a great extreme rules pay-per-view to come as this wasn't even an extreme rules match but we got to see these two superstars go to the extreme they push themselves beyond their limits and Ryder in the end is gonna walk out victorious so big victory for Long Island IZ and Zack Ryder, he's going to woo, woo, woo his way back to the locker room as we get ready for our next contest here. And Ryder, no fear whatsoever, just jumping over the top rope there. He's not not even looking phased from that DDT earlier. I mean, I don't know, he, you'd think he could have a concussion or something from that, but Ryder showing that he's still got some balance and arrogance left in him. But let's move into our tag team matchup here. Six-man tag team not an elimination match it's just straight up six-man tag Dolph Ziggler Damian Sandow and Ryback taking on the shield and as we know whoever pins the shield if oh big injury there from Seth Rollins but if the shield wins then they win this matchup however if the other team wins whoever pins the shield uh crap this is wow that's my editing flaw but anyway like I was saying, whoever pins the shield, should they pin the shield, they will get a hardcore championship matchup against Dean Ambrose tomorrow night on WIZ. I, I gotta come up with a name now, because, I mean, I don't know, WIZ, it feels like it could be something like Wrestling Internet Zone, I don't know, I was gonna say Impact, but then that's too much like TNA. I'll, have to, I'll think of something. I'll think of something, and we will have something be really cool and awesome. And once again, the injury from Seth Rollins. A nice counter and the kick to the side of the head. And now Raw. Oh, now I remember what the problem was. The problem was that I had chose... That wasn't an editing flaw. The problem was that I had accidentally chosen uh, Ambrose there on the outside, and once, like, I tried to tag in, 
And the problem was that I would be stuck as whoever's on the apron, which is... I don't know, I think that's a pretty big flaw in a game. Um, but maybe they'll get that fixed in the future, but... I don't know, just, like, if you wanted to play as one guy and not play as everyone else, they should just... I, I don't know, I don't know exactly what's up with that, but... Yeah, that is an issue with the game, but... Yeah, I apologize for that. Anyway, Dolph Ziggler sending Seth Rollins into the corner. He's gonna make a tag here to Damian Sandow. And Ziggler takes him down with a snapmare. Next snap into the elbow drop there from Sandow. So Sandow, not usually much of a high flyer, but looking to tap into some new uh, realms of his offense, try to bust out some new moves to try and put away the shield here and potentially get himself a hardcore championship opportunity as we still aren't exactly sure what Damian Sandow, or why Damian Sandow helped Ziggler a few weeks ago against Roman Reigns in a match, but from now, I guess I guess these two are tag team partners now, and they're looking to team up to take down the shield, but Rollins with an elbow to the face, and now a moonsault to Damian Sandow. As Rollins now some punches to the face, went for the kick, but it was blocked, and now a chop blocked, and he went for the leg sweep there, but it was countered, and now, back neck breaker takedown to Damian Sandow. And Rollins countered here. And Ryback going to send Rollins sprawling to the outside there. As Ryback pulled on the top rope there. So, a little bit of a dirty move from Ryback. But you got to do whatever it takes to defeat a team like the Shield. And now Sandow raking the eyes here. That's another bit of a dirty move. But, oh, big springboard clothesline there from Seth Rollins. As a moonsault once again to Damian Sandow. As Rollins go to the top rope. And a double knee to the stomach of Damian Sandow. But now Rollins is countered. And no, once again, he goes over the top rope as Ryback pulling down on that top rope. And now he gets pulled off the apron there by Seth Rollins. As Rollins now up on the apron here. And he grabs Damian Sandow. What is this? Ooh, a leg drop guillotine there. That had to be painful. As Seth Rollins back into the ring here. Picking Damian Sandow up to his feet and now sending him into the turnbuckle where he makes a tag to the hardcore champion Dean Ambrose. And now Seth Rollins. Atomic drop and a big boot there from Dean Ambrose. What a nice double team maneuver from the shield as now Ambrose countered by Sam Sandow. And he takes him down now with a black hole slam as we move on into the match. As this match dragged on. I mean, by this point, you should know the whole drill, but I guess if you are new, if matches drag on, I will uh, trim them because, you know, if it's like a 15-minute match and it's, like, really painful to watch, I'm not going to show it because, like I said earlier, I'm not going to put something on YouTube that I wouldn't watch myself. I mean, I don't watch my videos, but I wouldn't put something that I wouldn't watch anyway. I mean, like, it's so unbearable that I wouldn't watch it. I'm not going to make you all watch it. So, Roman Reigns setting up Ryback here for a vicious no Ryback countered into a DDT I think and Ryback avoided avoids the spear nice counter from Ryback as he makes a tag to Dolph Ziggler and now Ziggler but Rollins still in the ring the ref's got to get Rollins out of the ring as this isn't a no disqualification match yet as now a suplex there a nice double team from the shield as now Sandow's got Rollins trying to get him out of the ring maybe but Roman Reigns now Irish whip sending Ziggler into the corner and look to make a tag to Ambrose but no Dolph Ziggler would have none of that and now driving that boot into the chin of Roman Reigns and now what is this Ziggler on the outside finally getting back into the ring here but counter from Ziggler sending Roman Reigns into the corner and now Ziggler makes a tag into Ryback and the human wrecking ball Oh, if this is the same move, what is this Ryback going over the top with that elbow? The same move that Ziggler and Sandow used earlier, and Ryback could be looking to finish it here as he's got Roman Reigns up. And look at the strength of Ryback here with a shell shock as the referee's back up on his feet. Never mind. And now Ryback hooks the leg. One, two, three, and Ryback gets the victory for his team, which means that next episode of multiverse it will be ryback versus dean ambrose for the hardcore championship so what a big victory here for this team getting the win over the shield and ryback he's got a title match next episode 
of multiverse, so that should be something epic to look forward to. But anyway, big tag team victory here for these three. And we have to figure out what the future holds for not only Ryback and his title match, but for the the now team of Dolph Ziggler and Damian Sandow, could they maybe be looking to challenge for the tag team titles? Do they have more business to deal with with the Shield? Or are they just sort of allies and they're going to continue their own singles careers? But anyway, let's move on to the next match, the tag team championship match between the Real Americans, Jack Swagger and Antonio Cesaro, going up against 3MB's Drew McIntyre and Heath Slater as... McIntyre and Slater, well, 3MB, they have a few tag team victories in recent weeks. I think they picked up like two or three, no, they picked up like two tag team victories, earning them this tag team title shot. But not only, we have to worry about potential future contenders should either of these teams win, because we know we have the team of Stone Cold Steve Austin and Batista. They've been running rough shot through the tag team division as well. So whoever wins this matchup, they're going to have to worry about the powerhouse, just that powerhouse team, almost like a team of icons, you could say. Oh, well, maybe not icons, that's not exactly the word I'm trying to look for here, but for lack of a better term, icons like Stone Cold and Batista. And I mean, that, that, that would just be one formidable team as they will be competing against each other later on tonight, maybe to see who is the better of the, t uh, better of the two, uh, friendly competition match, I don't know, but I'm getting sidetracked. We have a tag team title match to deal with here. And the real Americans are in trouble as McIntyre takes down Cesaro. With a oh, big kick there from Slater, but a neck breaker from McIntyre. As now Cesaro takes down McIntyre with a German suplex. And a shoulder takedown there from Jack Swagger. As now Cesaro going to the outside. As this is an Extreme Rules tag team match for the first matchup of the night we have our or we have our first Extreme Rules match of the night in this tag team match is McIntyre. He's got Cesaro there dangling over the apron, but Cesaro gets back into the ring. And a back suplex counter from Jack Swagger is now back suplex from Cesaro to the outside. As that is concrete floor protected by very thin padding, of course. So Swagger takes down uh, Slater there. And a big knee from Cesaro to Drew McIntyre. And a bulldog there from Slater. And now, Cesaro, he's got your McIntyre. Ooh, what a nice knee breaker, a shin breaker there. And another back suplex from Jack Swagger. Is Matt, or not matchups, but we got... Blah, 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 I can't even talk now. This We had both... I can't speak, apparently, but we had action on both sides of the ring. But now, since I had that whole speech impediment thing there, we now have... They're fairly close now. As almost They were in the ring at one time, but nice suplex there from Cesaro, as a Swagger's now got the kendo stick going after Slater, so we got Slater and Swagger in the ring, we have McIntyre and Cesaro there, just right here in front of the announce table, as big kendo shit, kendo, whoa, that could've been bad, big kendo stick shot from Swagger to Slater, but now I'm like way out of date, so, oh my god, what am I saying? Oh my god, I'm sorry, this is my first commentary in a while, but anyway, Swagger with a bit of a low blow there, but this is no disqualification, and now Swagger working the leg there of Slater as he's trying to maybe soften him up for that ankle lock, as now Drew McIntyre going under the ring, and he's going to pull out a sledgehammer there, and Swagger, German suplex to Heath Slater, as he almost put him through the table there, but not quite, as now... Jack Swaggums, he's got it, but no Slater with an elbow to the head of Jack Swagger. And now Slater, big roundhouse kick there from Slater to the face of Jack Swagger. And now Slater, big, what the heck was that? A nice springboard splash, but he missed. And now it's Swagger in control of Slater here, going back to the knee. Try, well, he's also sort of wrenching on that ankle, so just trying to soften up Slater for the ankle lock. And now he's got him by the leg here, and a DDT to the foot. And that'll definitely try to soften up the ankle as Cesaro now gets sent back into the ring as McIntyre he's got a going under the ring here and what is this Slater drops Swagger on the back of his head as we got a sledgehammer still out there at ringside and Antonio Cesaro with a submission here he's got that's a bit of a torture rack there he's got Drew McIntyre in the torture rack and now Swagger back to the knee here 
And Cesaro finally puts down McIntyre, but that was just showcasing the power in a roll up here from Slater. One, but no swagger. Counters into the bridge here. One, two, three, and wow, I guess that's why you don't give 3MB a title shot because the Real Americans on a roll up defeat 3MB. As 3MB, they did, they had their, they had their own fair share of offense in this one, but in the end, it was Jack Swagger for the Real Americans to get the victory over three-man band. So, I guess Slater and McIntyre and Jinder Mahal, all of 3MB, they won't be celebrating a victory tonight as they now have to bask in their defeat. I think that's an oxymoron, but anyway. The Real Americans get to bask in their glory as they retain the tag team titles here tonight at Extreme Rules over 3MBs. We did get to see some toys getting used in this one, but it may only be a shadow, not a shadow, may only pale in comparison to the events of later on tonight because we know we have an Extreme Rules world title match in the main event, but that's not next. We have Batista versus Stone Cold in a non-Extreme Rules match, but both these two superstars are tag team partners, and I guess this is just sort of a matchup to see who is the better of the two and who is the quote-unquote weak link. I'm not exactly sure, but big elbow there from Batista. As Batista and Stone Cold, they've picked up a number of tag team victories. As Stone Cold, I believe he's undefeated so far in singles competition, so we'll have to see if he can keep that streak going, or will the animal derail the singles victories for Stone Cold, but either way, these two superstars, now that 3MB lost their tag team title match, you'd have to think that this team of Stone Cold and Batista would be number one contenders. They would be in that position, so I guess we'll have to see if another team can step up and take that away from them, will we? or will this team continue to ride its wave of momentum into a championship match at the next pay-per-view? I guess we'll just have to wait and see, but for now, Stone Cold and Batista one-on-one -on -one here, as Batista's got Stone Cold, well, he had him in a headlock, but Stone Cold countered. Now both superstars back up on their feet, and Stone Cold tossing Batista away. Stone Cold now trying to get the upper hand on the animal, and what a nice neck breaker there. Just like a back neck, I'm not exactly sure what to call that, but some sort of a version of a neck breaker there from Stone Cold. Anyway, he's got Batista now into the corner, went for the clothesline, and Batista was able to avoid it. But Stone Cold once again, not allowing Batista to gain control. And once again, Stone Cold tosses Batista away and now drops an elbow on the back of Batista's head. As now Stone Cold picks up Batista and now has him up against the ropes there. And what's he trying to set up here? Stone Cold getting a running start here. Oh, and he just drops his leg across the throat of Batista, sending Batista's throat into that uh, ring apron there. Or not ring apron, the ropes. As that had to be painful there, almost like a guillotine maneuver there. But now Batista, snapmare takedown, big boot to the face of Steve Austin. But Austin back to his feet there with a nice left hand. And a clothesline takes down Batista, but Batista right back up onto his feet. As these two superstars have been working with each other for some time, so beginning to know each other's offensive styles and know a way to be able to counter that, as you see another counter there from Stone Cold, and Batista with a big right hand there to Stone Cold, and now just punching away, unloading on the face of Stone Cold, as Batista now picks him up, and he's got him here up on his shoulders for a power slam. And Batista, he's one powerful guy, looking to utilize that huge powerhouse style offense that he has. Whereas Stone Cold, he's more of a brawler, so he's just gonna wanna uh, hit hit Batista with some of those strikes and some of those some of his high impact offense, and just bust out a few big maneuvers like his Thez press or the elbow drop to the face, or of course the Stone Cold stunner. But anyways, you can see, one thing I like that they have in this game. I don't know if it's been there before but how they added in the foam fingers, I don't think it was there before, but it's a pretty cool new addition, especially with, you know, Stone Cold's middle finger, uh, uh, why did I forget what it was just called, uh, the finger, no, foam finger, that's what it was, I zoned out there for a moment, but Stone Cold takes down Batista, and now, punching away at the face of Batista here, it's like I was saying, 
trying to get back to that brawling style with his strikes is now he's got Batista for a gut wrench suplex driving Batista into the mat and now Stone Cold he's got Batista up on his feet and now Stone Cold went for the close on but Batista countered slamming Stone Cold into the mat now Batista he's got Stone Cold up on his feet up on his shoulders now and Batista rolls through there taking down Stone Cold and Batista looks like he's not done there yet just looking to inflict more damage with a DDT. Driving Stone Cold headfirst into the mat, but Stone Cold back to his feet. Counters with a jawbreaker. And now he's got Batista by the arm here. But Batista with a knee lift is able to counter. And now a spine buster to Stone Cold. And Batista could be on the verge of a victory here. As he could be one Batista bomb away from putting away Stone Cold Steve Austin here. And Batista kick to the gut. He's setting up Stone Cold for Vintage Batista bomb from Batista. And Batista could be closing in on a victory here over his tag team partner. And Batista into the cover here. One, two, three. And Batista defeats Stone Cold Steve Austin here tonight at Extreme Rules. And these two... Ah, sorry. These two put on quite a match. But in the end, it was Batista with the victory over Steve Austin. Maybe proving that... he that he's the better of the two. I don't know exactly where this could lead, but hopefully these two are still on the same page and they can make a run for that for those tag team titles or whatever may have whatever may come their way, but Batista victorious here tonight against Stone Cold Steve Austin and he can celebrate now as we get ready to move into the main event of the evening, which is of course for the WIZ Heavyweight Championship, the champion, Triple H, taking on Brock Lesnar as another powerhouse. As you know, we transition from Batista and Stone Cold, who are quite the powerhouse brawling combination. And we move into a matchup between the Cerebral Assassin and a powerhouse like Brock Lesnar. So, you could say, well, they're kind of similar matchups. So, I mean... I'm not going to say that th this is the same match, because clearly Triple H and Stone Cold, they're very different, as well as Brock Lesnar and Batista, they're nowhere near the same, but as far as, like, wrestling styles, you could say Triple H and Stone Cold are more of the brawling, rugged style, whereas you got guys like Brock Lesnar and Batista who are more of the powerhouse kind, and a big fisherman suplex from Brock Lesnar, as now he's got Bat Triple H by the arm here, and a nice knee lift counter as he sets up Brock Lesnar for a DDT into the mat. But anyways, we know Brock Lesnar, he was involved in quite the rivalry with Ryback as Brock Lesnar. First off, it was Lesnar, um, Lesnar versus Ryback versus Batista in a triple threat match. After the match, I believe it was Seth Rollins who came out to attack Ryback, but Brock Lesnar came back into the ring and saved Ryback. So then we had Lesnar and Ryback on a team against the Shield the following week, but then it was Brock Lesnar who turned his back on Ryback, leaving Ryback, hanging Ryback out to dry against the Shield. And then a few weeks ago, like two weeks ago, I think, it was Brock Lesnar versus Ryback in a one on one match, which was pretty much a number one contenders match, which got Brock Lesnar into this match with Triple H. And in the end, of course, Lesnar was victorious over Ryback. But now, Brock Lesnar, can he be victorious over the game? The Cerebral Assassin, Triple H here tonight is Triple H. He's got a table and a big kick to the gut there from Brock Lesnar. As now Triple H trying to make it back to his feet. Picking up the table here is Lesnar now going under the ring. And what's he looking to grab here? It looks like he's got a steel chair. But now Triple H takes the chair back. And a big shot to the face there with the steel chair. Not just throwing it at Brock Lesnar. And now Triple H, once again with the steel chair, went to deliver a big blow to Lesnar. But Lesnar caught the chair, and now he strikes Triple H with the chair. And again, another shot to the head with the chair. As now Lesnar, I mean, these two very quick to get the weapons here, not wasting any time to pull out some toys from under the ring. And Lesnar once again goes under the ring. And now he's got a baseball bat by the looks of it. Triple H propping that table in the corner, but Lesnar with the bat right to the face of Triple H. And again, not even 
not even letting Triple H make it back to his feet. Lesnar just rushing right at Triple H with a bat. And he went to do it again, but this time Triple H caught the bat. And he went to deliver a shot to Lesnar, but Lesnar would have none of that. Taking Triple H down with a clothesline. One, but a kick out by Triple H. And now Brock Lesnar sending Triple H into the corner. And as Triple H bounces back, he's got him up for a gut buster there to the game, Triple H. And so far, by the looks of things, Brock Lesnar is in control of this one. But as I say that, no, never mind. Big knee to the face by Triple H. And now Triple H, he's picking up Lesnar here. What's he going for? But Lesnar counters, and a leg sweep takes down Triple H. And into the cover, one. But again, Triple H kicks out at a count of one. Not even waiting for a two count. Not trying to show any signs of weakness here. As now, Lesnar back on the outside. Not sure exactly what he's going for. It looks like he's taking the cover off the announce table here. As now, Triple H going to the outside here. But Lesnar, he's got Triple H up against the table there, but now a belly-to-belly -belly suplex takes him down. As Lesnar could be looking to put the game through the table, or not, as Lesnar now throwing Triple H back into the ring. And Lesnar picking up Triple H here, and he's got him up on his shoulders. Could be looking to end it here. F5 to Triple H. And Lesnar could be moments away from becoming the new champion. Two and no Triple H. Showing his resolve to able to kick out of that one. But now Lesnar, big German suplex there. Tossing Triple H across the ring. And now he's got Triple H up on his feet here. And an Irish whip sends him into the table. And a spear through the table. Breaking Triple H through the table. But Lesnar's not done yet. No, punching the face of Triple H. As now Triple H is just getting decimated by Lesnar. Lesnar now stomped to the arm. Could be softening up Triple H for that Kimura lock. Into the cover, but no, Triple H kicks out. And now Lesnar gets countered by Triple H. As now Triple H has got the baseball bat. And a big home run shot there to Lesnar with the bat. As now Triple H, he's got Lesnar here. Spine buster, vintage Triple H with the double A spine buster. And now Triple H setting up Lesnar here for the pedigree perhaps. And here we go, he's got him. Could this be it? Triple H pedigree to Brock Lesnar as his leg came down on that bat there. Triple H with that pedigree. He's put away many a superstar. Hooks the leg. One, two, three. No, Brock Lesnar stays alive. Somehow manages to kick out of the pedigree. I mean, Triple H kicked out of the F5, so now I guess they're even. Both superstars have kicked out of each other's finishers. And Lesnar under the cover. One, two, three. And Brock Lesnar defeats Triple H. With, uh, I missed what the move was, but Lesnar defeats Triple H here. And now we have a new WIZ heavyweight champion as Triple H unsuccessful in retaining his championship here tonight against Brock Lesnar. And Lesnar becomes the new WIZ heavyweight champion in a hard fought bout against Triple H here. Both superstars took a finisher, but in the end, this pedigree right here from Triple H. As you see, Lesnar's knee came down on that bat there. But in the end, Lesnar still came back and found enough energy left to win. And Lesnar is going to walk out of here tonight with the championship. As you can see, that WIZ Heavyweight Championship. Brock Lesnar, it's now his as he got the victory over Triple H here tonight in this Extreme Rules match. Very good pay-per-view. Might have been a little short, but in the end, I think it was a pretty successful pay-per-view. Especially for one Brock Lesnar in this Extreme Rules match. They took each other to the limit, brought out some toys. And in the end, I think they put on a pretty entertaining match for the fans. But Lesnar, I don't know if the fans are going to be too happy about that. But Brock Lesnar, he's walking out here. Your new WIZ Heavyweight Champion. And could Lesnar now be what's best for business? I guess we'll have to see in the future how this title reign is going to work out for Brock Lesnar. Will he be best for business? I guess we're going to have to find out, but as you can see, the match card, Lesnar with the victory over Triple H there in the main event. And let's go ahead. Zack Ryder defeated R-Truth, Ryback, Damon Sandow and Dolph Ziggler defeated Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose, The Shield. 
JBL defeated Jinder Mahal, but I did not show that. Swagger and Cesaro retained the tag team titles against 3MB. Batista defeated Stone Cold, and in the main event, Brock Lesnar defeated Triple H. So, if you enjoyed the pay-per-view, like I said, I do apologize for it being so short, but I've already gone through, you know, what all the issues were. But anyway, if you enjoyed the pay-per-view, be sure to leave a like. Uh, the next episode of Multiverse should be coming out pretty soon, since this one was so late. But anyway, I want to thank you all for watching. Make sure to stay tuned for more Multiverse, as well as any other content on my channel. Keep on YouTubing.